and I'm sure you'll recognize this as a uh, the portrait of R. Atkinson Fox that Ann sent to me, and it is in the book. These are just let's just go through these books. On the left is, and these are slides taken of these photographs. Uh, on the left is our Atkinson Fox mother, and on the right is his wife Anna Gaffney when she was young. And I, I really think that you can see the resemblance to some of the portraits, particularly the uh, divorced portraits of the mother and mothers and children. I just see a striking resemblance to Anna in those. On the left is R. Atkinson Fox in his studio with a painting that I'm told was one of his favorite subjects. He loved to paint cows. And on the right is R. Atkinson Fox and his wife in, 19 or in the early 30s. Okay, on the left is, is a picture of R. Atkinson Fox with Garnet Fox, and this was at an exhibition. And on the right are uh, Fox and Anna with their first child, uh, Robert Atkinson Fox III. On the left are the four daughters with Anna, and on the right are Flo, Anne, and Dottie. Okay, I included this picture of uh, RAF's and Anna's marriage license application because we didn't bring my pointer, did we? I, I want you to notice how he signed his name when perhaps he was a little bit nervous. He didn't take the time for the careful calligraphy that we find on his pictures. And this is, um, <coughs> I have this somewhere here and I want to read it to you. This is, Bill told me, the only example that he has of um, R. Atkinson Fox's handwriting. No, uh, no word today. And when a day goes by without a word, Uh, read, the, read this book, this book on, on Shakhtan Indians. I'm going to see tomorrow if I can find the picture of the girl. And uh, wrote, and I can't read the rest of it, wrote a couple of hours ago, Rob. So, well, I don't know, I would presume that maybe this is a little booklet that he sent to Anna while he was out on a trip somewhere. Okay. <coughs> Oh, this is, and this is a slide made from a, a Polaroid that was, can you see this at all back there? This is when, this is Bill in the middle, Bill Fox and his wife Lil and their little dog Gypsy, and me at our house in Windsor when they visited. Okay, buddy. And Bill, as we mentioned before, is also a very talented artist, and he, these are paintings that every year he puts a different painting on his Christmas cards. And I understand that he is still painting now as therapy. He's suffered a stroke. His left side is paralyzed, and he's painting with his right hand. The biggest problem that he has is getting the lids off the tubes. So someone has to take the lids off the paint tubes for him. Uh, this is Charles, the little red fox that you saw on Charles Stationery. These are our Charles and Ethel's Christmas cards. And then the one on the right is the one Ethel sent to me one year. Okay, this is a painting. This is the painting that I talked about in the newsletter. It's actually, uh, we had the print from Pat Gibson. It's number 418 on the listed prints. This, this to me is an amazing story in terms of coincidences, which always seemed to happen in this search. I was taking a college class. I went to class. We were told the next week we would meet at a different college because the instructor wanted us to hear a certain teacher or a certain lecturer. We went to that college the next week. The room we were supposed to meet in had no chairs. We went to a different room, and here was this painting on the wall. This number of sequences, I just couldn't believe it. And here, uh, 
you show the next slide, you get an idea of the size of it. This painting is almost six feet tall. It takes two men to move it. It's almost five feet wide. At the time that I listed the print from Pat's photo, we did not have a title. Uh, and on the back, this painting was apparently exhibited. It has a, an exhibit number. And the title written in by, I would presume, Fox himself, in the heart of the Sierra Nevadas. And I know someone was talking last night about someone having an oil painting, and they didn't want to have it restored and redone because they didn't want to draw, pull out the actual nails that Fox had put in there himself. And I, I just had so much of that feeling. I, I had this painting in my home for about a week. Nothing else in my home <laughs> in this painting in my living room. And the, to see the, the nails, you know he stretched that canvas, that the paint that he put on, was a real thrill for me. It, it was a real high point. Uh, the man on the left is uh, a curator of, of uh, what's the word I want, preservation at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City. And we took it to the Nelson to find out what it would take to restore it and, what, and to make sure this was all for the benefit of the college that owns it. Uh, they had originally wanted a written appraisal. I called a professional appraiser in town. He charged $65 an hour and he wanted to, he asked me if I knew of any books on this artist. <laughs> so I went back to the college and I said, you know, this guy's going to charge you $65 an hour for an appraisal and he's going to use my book. I said, I think I can tell you what it's worth and I won't charge you a dime. <laughs> so we're in the process of trying to buy it. There's, when you're dealing with the college, they say they have no qualms about selling it. Uh, they're more interested in selling it than they are in spending the money to restore it. But there's board meetings and votes and all this that has to be gone through. So we hope eventually to own it. Okay. All right, now just a few things that I just brought along a few things that I, I want to point out. Uh, this, and in the newsletter, I mentioned Pat Gibson sent me this picture. This lady looking at a castle up here. And this is the one that she said that she'd seen an oil painting of signed Fox, right? Signed R. Atkins and Fox. It was sold, and it was sold for a Fox. It was sold as a Fox. Uh, then she found a print that had part of a signature looked like Newton, E-W-T-O-N, or something like that. <coughs> okay, and uh, is it Barb? Where's Barb? Okay, is, that, is this your farm genius? I found this photo in my file and it does not have a name on it. But here is this, the, virtually the same print. I, mean, I have one time, I think it's for two years. Well, and it, the only difference is, see this girl is exactly the same as in this print, but this girl has just been added and this is signed by Ron G. Newton. Now the thing about this was that upon examination under black light, it was pretty much decided that the uh, signature had been added later. <coughs> uh, these next two are of prints that I got from Bill Fox that I have not listed yet. This is a Gerlach Barclow Publishing Company <coughs> called A Gentle Birth, and it's printed at the bottom painting by Fox. And the other one, is nature in the raw is seldom mild. Nature in the raw is portrayed by the famous artist R. Atkinson Fox, inspired by the battle between an enraged bull buffalo and the savage Indian hunters whose lances roused the beast with furious charge. Nature in the raw is seldom mild, and raw tobaccos have no place in cigarettes. So those will be listed. For the uh, this is a print that John Jager sent me called Faithful and True. It's a new print that will be added. And the significant thing about this is that it is, the copy that he sent me is on, it's a laser print. And if you have not seen the laser prints, you really need to look at them because I think that some of us could be easily fooled. I mean, you could pay old price for a modern copy. I mean, it's virtually a copy is what it is that could maybe cost six or eight dollars to make. So that's something you might want to look into. And uh, Dan and Sandra Ross, just, I just got this just a day or two before we left. Uh, 
the award of friends has been sent, found signed. So I thought that was really exciting. <coughs> this is probably the most high, we find this is the most high price print. I've been told that it has been priced as high as $700. I just stuck some of these in here because I wanted to show them to you talk about them in Meditation Fancy Free, and it, it is virtually the highest price print. Look at this is my favorite one. This is Maxine from the uh, Library of Congress, and I, I think she's probably... Do any of you remember posing for this one? I think she's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay, isn't there another one? Um, hmm? Yeah. Pride of the Farm is another of my favorites. Daughter of the Setting Sun. Now, to me, that's my favorite Indian. I think that's a, to me, I like that one better than. In meditation fantasy free. And this is an unsigned maybe. This has never been found signed, been found signed, but it's one of my favorite prints, Sweethearts of the Sky. Because I love the old bear one. If you look, compare her legs and feet to the girl in June Morn. The girl in June Morn is barefoot, but the legs and feet are exactly the same, except this one is just. Okay, I think that's the last. Oh no, I brought, I wanted to point out something to you, something I found. I've just been showing you this as a comparison to the type of background. You see this type of background in a lot of the old Fox and Parish prints. And this is an ad that is now running in various uh, health food store magazines and vegetarian magazines for these vitamins. And look at that background. When I saw it, I thought that it had to be daybreak. It, I mean, it had to be just an exact copy, but it isn't. There are, there are small differences, and I have written to the company, and they forwarded my letter supposedly to the art director, and they're supposed to get back to me. Okay, can I have the lights up just for a minute? No? Or not just for a minute, but I'm going to have the lights up. We're going to... What? Oh, yeah, that's just the cover of the magazine that that ad appears in. If anybody wants to look for it, it's called Today's Living. And you go into a health food store and they, you know, you buy something and they stick this magazine into your sack. 